So you just finished your first programming class and you're very excited about the, you know, the opportunity of maybe getting an internship, maybe making projects, and you know you need to build a portfolio, but you don't exactly know how to do that. Now you've heard of this thing called GitHub, other people are using it and you know that it's for people that are programming, right? Um, but other than that, you don't know anything else about it. So we're gonna talk about that today. And again, this video is exactly for you if you just kind of heard of GitHub, you're not familiar with it, you don't wanna deal with the terminology, just yet. Um, there are some terms that are pretty important for you to know, and I'm going to explain them in plain English with a little bit of an accent, so bear with me on that. Um, but by the end of this video, you're going to know what you can do with GitHub, why you need it, and hopefully you won't be so intimidated by it and you'll be more willing to move forward with making an account and starting to upload your projects there, right? So for this example that we're going to go through, let's pretend that you and I you know, we're both working on a project together. Let's just say you probably took Java as your first class or maybe C, but let, let's assume we, you and I are both working on a project together to build a calculator. You probably already did that in your programming class, but just just for the sake of example, let's go with that. So the first thing you're gonna hear about GitHub is that it's version control. So what does that even mean? So think of it this way. You and I were working on that calculator, version one of this calculator application we're gonna make, which is just gonna work on the command line. Um, it's going to be able to have the addition feature right now. So our version one of the calculator is going to have the addition feature. Now, once we finish that part, because we're going to break down our project in multiple releases, right? Just the way that, um, you know, applications are released within the app store. Version two is, is, is then going to have addition, subtraction, and multiplication. And eventually when we do that, we're going to have version three, right? Which is going to have all, all four, you know, ways of calculating, right? plus, minus, divide, multiply. <clears throat> I forgot how to say this, so I just said ways of calculating, right? So four main operations of math. Again, with version control through GitHub, we're able to manage, maintain each release that we do, right? Because I know how you've, done pro how, you, how you've done projects in the past, you probably, you would work on it one part at a time, save it, come back to it the next day, save it again, come back to it the next day. But as you got far along into the pro as you got farther along into the project, you did you never unless you saved a different version of it in a different file, you couldn't roll that back. So with version control to services like GitHub, you're able to almost maintain a timestamp where you have those versions and you're able to logically chronologically keep track of them, right? So that's what they mean by version control. So the second fancy word is I'm sure you've heard repositories. All repositories mean is where your projects are stored, right? So right now you're probably using something like Dr. Java, and I we use that in my school. Or maybe you're using IntelliJ, maybe you're using, you know, Eclipse. When you save your projects, you probably just save them on your local hard drive, right? On your desktop, your documents, whatever. So at that point in time, that place of storage for you locally, you could consider that that was your repository for your project. In that same manner, when you have GitHub, you're using their cloud services or really just their website to upload your project. So because your project lives in GitHub or in within within GitHub's within GitHub's cloud services, that's essentially your code repository, right? That's where your project is stored. It's being stored in GitHub's cloud. So that's all repositories mean or repos for short. But you're gonna hear that word a lot once you start working with this, right? Again, something simple, just different terminology for it. Now you're gonna hear about commits, right? That you need to, you know, they need to commit your project, they need to do a commit. All a commit is, is as you're working along, is basically like taking a screenshot of your project at that point in time. So let's say, again, back to the calculator project, we're working on it. We did the first part where we did the minus and working on the plus. And at that point we run into a really annoying bug that we're trying to sort out with the plus feature and we spend hours on it. And once we, once we're able to get the program to run, we finish that part. Maybe we're not done with that feature yet, but we still want to make sure we're at a, we save that all those changes we made to fix that. So at that point we just take a screenshot or a commit of our code of our project at that point in time. So that's all commits are just screenshots, timestamps of your code at whatever point, at whatever working point you're on it. Next we have branches, right? So back to the version control aspect of it and back to our aspect of the calculator. So this calculator you and I are working on, 
The plan is to give it to a business. This business, for whatever reason, needs this Java calculator that we're building. So once we build it out for them, maybe we're gonna start adding new features. Maybe we're gonna give it a nice user interface. Maybe we're gonna add you know, exponential calculations. But because a business needs it, they always need to be able to have a calculator that works, right? So once we give them the calculator, we still need to continue adding features to it but we can't really go and change the code base of their calculator. If we do that and we make a mistake, well, the calculator is going to be down. And I'm sure you've seen this happen for other applications, right? I'm sure you use down detector to see when Facebook is down, when, when Instagram is down. Again, that's for a whole other array of reasons. But by that same token, we don't want our working project to be something we mess with. So this is why you have different branches of a repository. That's why you have... In other words, different versions of the code we're working on. And what I put here is basically once you start working, once you get to working with teams, with businesses, with companies, you're going to have multiple branches of the same code or multiple branches of this calculator product, right? So whatever the, you know, let's say we lent our calculator to a restaurant, whatever they're using, we're not going to touch. This is basically called, this is going to be our production branch. So that production branch, um, you know, it's always working. It's never being edited by anybody because it works. It stays there. We don't touch that. So when we do have a new version that, you know, we've already been working on that we're pretty sure has been working well, but we want to test it out a little more thoroughly. We have our testing branch, right? Usually it's called something else, but I don't want to get into that terminology. That's outside of the scope of this video. So again, if we're if we have a working copy of a newer version of our code, we're gonna, we call that our testing branch, right? And that's what we kind of just make sure it's not gonna cause any errors once it starts being used by the business. And the main one, which is the one where we can make all the changes we want, we can add all the features we want. And as we build it out, this is the one that gets, you know, the one that gets the most edits, the one that gets changed the most is our development branch, right? So let's say, for the business that we're working with, let's say it's a restaurant, we're building out, we wanna add exponential calculations to our calculator. So we would start adding that code in our development branch. Once we finish and we're pretty sure it works well, then we move that to our test branch. And that's really just adding all our new code to the branch where we have all our older code, right? Just to make sure that all those new parts we added that we created in our development branch are gonna play nicely with the testing branch which is really just a copy of the production branch that were, that's not actually being used by the business. So testing branch, again, it matches pretty much everything that the business has in production, but with the addition of the new features from development, right? So testing branch is kind of like the middle ground. Once it passes all the tests, when we know it's not, once we know it's not gonna crash, then we go ahead and move on to moving into production, right? And that's pretty much how that works. Okay. So next we're going to talk about forks, right? So with this calculator app that we made, you and I made it, it's our repository, it's our project, but let's say somebody else, you know, because we're so nice, we're so, you know, we like to help other people out. We're going to let them use our project. We're going to give our code. It's going to be open source. Anybody can request it. Anybody can use it. Anybody can copy it. You know, we're not here trying to hoard it either. <clears throat> so because we want to let other people copy it, but we don't necessarily want to let them change our version of it. The people that want to have a copy of our code or our repository are able to create a fork of it. So this means that they are able to copy our code and basically do whatever they want to it in a separate set of branches, independent, independent from what we've already made. So again, a fork is really just a copy of it. That's not going to change anything in the original branch. And last we have a pull request. So back to the example of, let's say we're trying to finish this calculator really fast. We already both did together the addition part of it, but now you want to work on the subtraction. Now you want to work on the subtraction and now I'm going to work on the division part of it. And we don't want to wait for each other to finish, right? So while you work on the subtraction, I work on the division. Once we're done, we want to combine this code, right? But Again, because we worked on different parts of the code, we need to do a pull request. So a pull request, what it really is, is 
you're trying to merge the code together into a single branch. And again, because there was changes that you made that affected a different part of the code that I made, ideally a pull request just, you know, it's just kind of double checks to make sure that there's nothing overriding each other. And that's, you know, that's a big part of why GitHub is so popular because it lets people collaborate, work on different parts of the same project together and just bring it together into one cohesive repository, right? So that's pretty much all the, I think the main terminology you're gonna hear when you start working with GitHub. You definitely need this once you start building up projects to put on your resume to talk about when you apply to internships or jobs. So definitely, I definitely hope you get started on this soon. It's a free account you can make. Now they have probably paid versions because of GitHub Copilot and this and that. But again, this is a must. And the quicker you start working on it, even if you only took one programming class or maybe you're just beginning, the better it's going to be for you in the long run because there's going to be a whole other set of tutorials you're going to watch for the command line and how to use it. But I'm sure you can knock it out of the park. So thank you for watching. I hope you're able to get some value out of this video and I wish you best of luck in your tech career.